Hello, friends. Welcome back for another week with Webb Simpson, uh, Lynx family and friends. Uh, we're joined today by seven-time PGA Tour winner, Webb Simpson, winner of the U.S. Open, the Players' Championship. And last week, we heard a little bit. If you didn't get a chance to watch that, go back in the archives and take a look at it. You'll learn the unique names of his children and how they were named and a little bit more about Webb's career. But we're going to continue talking today about adoption. Webb, that's been on your heart. And really, when I asked you to do this Zoom call, you said, you know, this is what God's been laying on my heart. So talk a little bit about that, because adoption, uh, we're talk, told in, in Galatians, and we're also told in Romans about adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul was writing to Roman audiences, says that, uh, you know, we have been adopted. We're no longer a slave, but a son, an heir mm -hmm. through God. So talk a little bit about why that's been on your heart. Yeah, so um, I, I love I love studying different doctrines of God. And I think uh, J.I. Packer says it way better to me that um, as great, and I'm paraphrasing, but as great and as amazing and as much of a miracle as the doctrine of justification is, um, the adoption, the doctrine of adoption is far greater. And so I just want to read a couple passages and then we can get into it. One of my favorite passages in all of scripture is Titus 3, 3 through 7. Um, so Paul kind of gives us the bad news first, kind of who we were, and then what Jesus did. And so here it is. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And so Paul right there kind of shows us this is who we were. And when Christ changes our life, when we trust in him, this is what we can become. And that Christ right here in verse 7 we're justified not because of works done by us, but we're justified by his grace. And so imagine being in a courtroom and I've committed a crime and I'm guilty of that crime. No doubt about it. It's a hundred percent. And the judge has the right to condemn me um, or let me go free. Well, either way is bad, right? Either I'm going to go to jail for the rest of my life or I'm going to go free. Um, but somebody has to come in and pay that if I don't. So if I go free, someone has to bear the weight of that. And so we see here that we're justified by his grace. So Christ took all of God's wrath, condemnation that I deserve. That's my fault. And he took it on himself. Um, and so as amazing as justification is that we're made right with God, that we don't have to stand before him guilty of our sin and, and bear the, the weight of that, um, that Jesus did it for us, is amazing. But the gospel doesn't stop there. And you kind of hit on a little bit, Jose. Um, Romans chapter 8, verse 14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. And so God takes our justification, good news, way further and says, I'm not just going to make you right with me. I want you to be invited into my family and come. Everything I have is yours. Uh, dwell with me. I'm going to dwell with you. Um, I'm going to be your God. You're going to be my people. And so, yeah, Jose, I've just been thinking what a miracle it is that God saved me and what a miracle it is that he doesn't need me, but he wants me to be a part of his family and he wants you to be a part of his family. And this gift and this offering is for anyone who will repent of their sins and call on Jesus to, to save their life. You know, Webb, as you're talking about that, I'm reminded of the movie Ben-Hur. And uh, in that movie, it's an old with, with Charlton, Charlton Heston, and it's a vivid portrayal, portrayal of a Roman adoption. Mm -hmm. uh, Judah, Ben-Hur, was a Jew. He'd been in prison in a, 
on a Roman galley, galley ship as a rover. And when the ship sinks in battle, Judah escapes and saves the life of a, of a Roman commander, Arius. Arius' only son has been killed, and he ultimately adopts Judah, who's pardoned for his supposed crimes. He's, he's also given a new name, Young Arius. He has all the rights of the, the inheritance. In the scene where, where the adoption is announced, Arius takes off his ancestral signet ring, and he gives it to the young Arius. And young Arius that uh, he has received, has says he now has a new life, a new home, and a new father. Mm. And, and, I, and the significance of that um, is that when you came to faith in Christ, when we've come to faith in Christ, based on what he's done on the cross, he gives us a new name and, and, right. and we are his beloved. We're heirs to the throne. And that becomes our identity. We, we read a book uh, with our links group called living fearless. Mm -hmm. And it talks about identity. Jamie Winship does a wonderful job of helping us understand what our true identity is. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah, that, that adoption process has been remarkable. And in, in that Roman world, Adoption was irreversible. Mm. Once it was done, it was done. And so, you know, while we still mess up, drop the ball, make bogeys, hit it OB, uh, wash the ball, uh, and, you know, it's always the caddy's <laughs> fault. We know, right, Webb? That's right. If, it, <laughs> if it's long or short, it's the caddy's fault. If it's left or right, it's the coach's fault. So it's never the player's fault. There you go. Our Lynx family has just now, they're out looking for caddies so they can find one that they know it's never their fault. But that's um, right. It is so good to know that um, you're out there. Uh, I know that uh, you, you have prioritized your schedule and time with your family. And uh, while you have five children keeping you really busy, uh, it is great to know we are adopted by the that's loving right. father. And so Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, we hope to see you this summer sometime. And Thank appreciate you, Jose. all you're doing. I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for listening uh, on the greatest topic in the world. Folks, we see you next time. Lynx Fellowship. God bless.